Hello friends and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. This is the course Basics of Programming in C Language. And in this tutorial, we are going to continue our practical sessions on the loops. Okay, so right now what we are doing is we are doing while loop and we have done a basic program of how while loop operates. Now we will try and build a useful program out of while loop and we will also try to run it through a debugger line by line so that we actually understand the operation of the while loop. Okay, so objective of this program is to print the multiples of 3 and 5 okay, between the numbers 1 and 100. So what we have to do is we have to print the multiples of 3 and 5 that lie between 1 and 100. So first of all let us include the basic header file that is stdio.h standard input output dot h okay now what we have to do is we will start our main function which always returns an integer okay so the main function returns an integer in C language we have to remember that now let us add a return zero statement that we should always do so as we do not forget to add a return statement in our code okay so now the basic template of our code is complete now let me do one thing let me change the perspective so that the only the code area is focused okay so here right so we can now see only the code on the screen now what I will do is I will take some variables for this code so let me take the variable int because we need numbers so the data type would be integer okay and uh, let us name our variable as number and it should be initialized to 0 okay so now what we have to do is we have to print the multiples of 3 and 5 between 1 and 100 so instead of 0 it should be initialized to 1 now let us start our while loop now the while loop while keyword comes first and then the condition inside the brackets so what should be our condition is the condition should be that the number should lie between 1 and 100 now it is already initialized from 1 so we only need to check the upper limit so upper limit should be 100 so number should be less than equal to 100 now remember that a while loop executes till the condition remains true so it will keep on executing it will keep on repeating the statements in the loop block till this condition is true okay so now let us begin our loop block and in the loop block we obviously have to increment our number okay so let us write number plus plus but because we have taken the numbers starting from 1 itself so it will not increment it in the beginning of the loop we will increment it at the end of the loop because for first time the number will already be 1 okay for the first time when the loop is entered the number will already be 1 so we have to first check whether 1 is a multiple of 3 and 5 or not and then we will increment to the next number okay so to check whether a particular number is divisible by other number what we have to do is we have to check the modulus operator so let us take another variable for modulus let us name it as mod so initialize it to 0 now mod equal to number modulus first let us check it by 3 if it is divisible by 3 or not then what we will do is we will print but depending on a condition so here we have to include a condition if mod is equal to 0 if the modulus is equal to 0 what does the modulus give you modulus give you the remainder so if the remainder of a division is 0 that means the number is exactly divisible by the dividend okay so if mod is equal to 0 we will print that our number is divisible by 3 we will write percentage d which will be replaced by our number is divisible by 3 okay and then we will have to give a new line after that so that is given using a escape sequence and percentage g over here is a format specifier okay which will be replaced by the variable value and the variable is number okay so 
further now we have to check whether the number is divisible by 5 or not let us write mod equal to number modulus 5 so here now we will divide the number by 5 and check the modulus the same if statement you can copy over here okay which will work but we will only have to replace the text inside the printf so here we have to write that the number is divisible by 5 okay so now our basic code outlay is complete and let us check if we have missed anything no we have not missed anything it will the control will come over here mod will be initialized to 0 number will be initialized to 1 and your while loop will execute and repeat until your number remains less than 100 okay and then first of all modulus of number with 3 will be calculated if it is 0 that means this number is divisible by 3 then you will calculate the modulus of the number by 5 and similarly if the modulus is 0 then you will print that the number is divisible by 5 and then you will increment the number and it will obviously go to the first line again and evaluate the condition again so our flow seems to be fine now let me switch back to the perspective where we can see the messages so that I can compile the program first save it and then compile the program and let us see if it is compiling successfully yes it has compiled successfully so now we have to execute the program and check whether it runs fine or not okay so it has printed the set of numbers let us see if it is true or not okay 3 is divisible by 3 fine 5 is divisible by 5 fine 6 is divisible by 3 9 is divisible by 3 10 is divisible by 5 so this program has worked perfectly fine so 99 is divisible by 3 and 100 is divisible by 5 so as we thought it has worked now what we have to do is we will check the execution of this program line by line okay so for the timing I'll just drag this message box down so that we can have a more clearer view of our program so now I will tell you how to use a debugger on your code debugger is available in the debug option okay so first what you have to do is you have to instead of taking a simple file you have to take a project to debug your code so what I will do is I'll just copy this code so that we can straight away paste it into a project let me take a new project new and then go to project because in the code blocks IDE the support for debugger is included in the projects only okay so that is why we have to take a project and the project type would be console application so click next and it would be C we will be using only C language project title we can give any title let us give it as while the other options leave them as it is this is just the path where your project has to be stored and these options you don't need to bother about click next and finish okay fine so now your project is created okay now we have to add a new file in this project let us add a empty file do you want to add this file in this active project yes we want to add it in the active project only okay it already has a main.c file so let us first open that main.c file out of this project So here is our while loop project and this is the main.c file that is included inside it so by default when you open a new project when you start a new project it includes a basic template of the main function so we don't need this main function we have already created our file so let us remove this code and place that code that we have created and let us zoom in a bit so that the view of the code window is clearer okay so now we can start our debugging to start your debugging first save your code and then go to the line where you want to put a breakpoint now in debugging there are some things first is the breakpoint what is the breakpoint a breakpoint is a place where your code will halt will get halted during the execution so that you can take control from over there okay what is suppose I add a debug breakpoint over the tenth line now what will happen is that my code while executing will come to this 10th line and it will stop over there 
and then I have an option to continue to the next line okay or if I want to print some variables I can print some variables and if I have another function that is being called at that particular line so I can also get into that particular function and then see what is happening inside that function another option is that straight away I skip to the end of the execution okay so these all options will be given while we will be debugging our code and the breakpoints are indicated by a red dot so to add a breakpoint to a particular line just right click over it and click add a breakpoint to remove a breakpoint from a line just right click over it again and remove breakpoint so right now I have added the breakpoint on the 12th line and to run in debug mode you have to click the red triangle instead of the green triangle you have to click the red triangle first let us build this program again and see if there are any errors no there are no errors so the building is complete now let us execute in the debug mode now the perspective falls okay so we'll just ignore this warning okay so this yellow triangle over here means that your control has now reached over here and it is stopping over here okay it is waiting for you to take some action fine so debugging console is also available over here now I will tell you how to print some variables so you can check whether the variables are initialized properly or not so the command is print okay and then you have to pass the name of the variable let us say print mod or you can press enter after that and it will print dollar one is equal to zero so the value of mod at this time is zero similarly let us try to print number the another variable that we have taken over here so the value of number is as one okay so the values are initialized as per our expectation now let us see how to go to the next line of the code so here are the debugging options this is run to the cursor that means it will if you place your cursor over here then it will come to that line and halt over there this is next line so it will just simply go to the next line this is step into so this is used whenever you have to step into a particular function okay and step out means it will execute till the end of this particular function and then halt over there so for the time being let us say we want to go to the next line so the control has come over here so this is just a bracket so which is a non code line it is a non executing line no operation which is it is called in the programming jargon so it has come to the line number 14 where it will calculate the modulus of number dividing by 3 okay so right now if you print the mod it will be 0 only because the line has not executed yet okay so as soon as you go to the next line now the value of mod should be calculated let us see what is the value of mod so print mod enter the value of mod is 1 okay why because the number is 1 and obviously 1 divided by 3 will generate quotient as 0 and remainder as 1 so modulus is 1 okay now this condition mod equal to 0 should be false because mod is 1 so this condition will turn out to be false so the control should not enter this if statement the control should not enter this particular if statement let us see if it does or not okay so it has straight away skipped this instruction from here to here this block is skipped and it has reached to the 19th statement which is mod equal to number modulus phi okay so now let us see what is the modulus which is generated over here when you go to the next line now that statement has actually evaluated now obviously modulus of 1 after dividing by 5 should also be 1 so let us try and print mod yes the answer is 1 so right now the modulus is 1 only now what we do is we will go to the next line now the number will be incremented okay let us try and print what is the value of number at this point of execution so print number okay right now it is 1 now let us see the value of number after execution of this line number plus plus this line has executed let us again print number okay so it is 2 so it has incremented by 1 exactly and it is 2 
So number is still less than equal to 100. So the control should go inside this while loop. Yes, it has gone back into the while loop. And it will now evaluate mod of number divided by 3. So modulus will be calculated. And this time the modulus should be equal to 2 because the number value is 2 and it is divided by 3. So question would be 0 and modulus would be 2. Remainder would be 2. Okay, so let us try and print it. Print mod. Okay, yes, as understood, as we had predicted, the value is 2. So now let us do one thing that we go to the next line and let us now come into the while loop again because by now the number should have been incremented by 2. Okay, so it should be. The value of the number now should be 3 because it has been incremented 2 times. Okay, now the number value is 3. So let us go to the next line. Now it comes to mod equal to number modulus of 3. Now it should generate a value of 0 into the modulus. So that means because 3 is divisible by 3, right? So the modulus would be 0 and mod should contain the value 0 after the execution of this program. So let us print it before the execution of the instruction and let us see the word value. So it is 2 as per the last execution. Now we execute it again when we come to next line. Now let us print it again. So the value is 0, right? So modulus is 0 this time. Now you should see that that control should enter the if block. Okay. So for the first time our control has entered the if block this condition should be executed and our message should be printed on the screen. So if you open the console window it has printed 3 is divisible by 3. Okay. Similarly as the loop continues each number will be incremented and whenever a number is divisible by 3 or 5 so the value of mod at that particular place would be 0 and it will enter the if block. And it will print that the number is divisible by 3 or 5 respectively. Okay. So I hope that the concept of this particular program is clearer to you. And uh, let us proceed to the future videos. Thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos.